Why, to the leper, he was pronounced clean. What is this? Came every 50 years. When the Jubilee came, the people reclaimed their land that they had lost in transactions. And all slaves were set free. That typifies when Jesus gathers us home. There's going to be a great jubilee. Would you say amen? amen? And the meek shall inherit the earth. We're going to get it back. The devil took it right now. 8% of the population controls 95% of the wealth. But when Jesus gives it back to us, the poor people are going to have their share. There's not going to be any fences over there. Not going to have to worry about savings accounts over there. Not going to worry about money over there. We're going to walk around on streets of gold. Would somebody say, Amen? I'm longing for the Jubilee. What does it say? That was in the law of Moses. You could only go so many furlongs. I was at a health clinic in California, and there was a Jewish scholar there who taught Hebrew at USC, and we had some great conversations. But on Sabbath, he wouldn't even carry his tray. Somebody else had to carry it. He wouldn't walk very far. He was adhering to something that's been nailed to the cross. This is the Feast of Tabernacles, and, and I just put on here, etc. There were hundreds of them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you with me? Paul, everywhere Paul went, everywhere Paul went, he had problems with Jewish believers who had been keeping these things for years, hundreds of years. They would come along and try to tell the Gentiles, you got to do this. And I understand it was difficult for them to give it up. But give it up they must if they believed in Jesus. Would you say amen out there? Amen. He took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross to make a queen. What is twain? Jew and Gentile. What's going to make of them? One in Christ Jesus. In Jesus there's neither east nor west. Male nor female, black nor white, Jew nor Gentile. If you bring that junk into the church, you're not really in. When the Lord calls you and converts you, you become a brother and a sister to everybody who believes in Jesus. All over the world, He makes us one. Some don't know that He's done that. Now, thank you, my brethren. As the lights go down, I will hasten. Would you all forgive me if I kept you five minutes longer? Let's see this. Let's see this. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Ten Commandments are not against you. Ten Commandments say, Thou shalt not steal. That's for your protection. Keep these thieves from stealing. Thou shalt not kill. That's for your protection. And if folk will obey it, you won't get killed. That's not against you. It makes something out of you. Gives you character. You can say no to a harlot when you keep the commandments. Go home to your own wife. Keeps the family secure. Children secure. Come on, say amen out there. Amen. Now, the moral law of God, written on two tables of with a finger of the law of Moses was written in a the law of God is inside the the law of Moses is in the side of the God's law, according to James, is a place or is the law that will be judged by moral law. Ten commandments. There are only ten of them. Most folk who condemn them don't even know what they say. I repeated them to you tonight. And some of you didn't know. It's all right. Learn. And then say, Jesus, I love you. And he says, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. God's law is written on stone. The law of Moses was written in a book. God wrote it with his own what? Amen. We're just reviewing now. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with a finger of God. There it is. You don't have to guess when you're in the truth. You don't have to wonder and find some little obscure text hoping it'll bail you out. No, 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 no. Truth will set you free. Ample proof of everything God wants you to know. And He declared unto you His covenant, which He commanded you to perform, even Ten Commandments, and He wrote them on tables of stone, not one text, several. Then we see something else. Ceremonial law. That's the one that we got nailed to the cross at. Written by Moses in a what? Go ahead and say it. 
You know, even though I've said it already, repetition deepens the impression. The more you say it, the more it'll hang in your mind. When some false prophet comes and tells you, oh, that was nailed to the cross, you'll know. Ladies and gentlemen, Moses was God's leader. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of the writing of the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, and he placed it in the side of the ark. Now that, that chest represents the ark of God. And he took and put the testimony into the ark, and set the staves on the ark, and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. That's God's law covered with mercy. Thank God the law that says thou shalt not is covered with mercy, and God sits on that. In order for anybody to change God's law, first of all, they've got to go to heaven, because that's where the original is. In the throne of God, he still sits on the mercy seat. Instead of golden angels, they're live angels. Lucifer used to be one. Gabriel took his place. Would somebody say amen? amen. Now, if you're going to change God's law, you've got to go to heaven. I think that's a pretty big undertaking. Once you get there, you've got to push aside the guards at the gate. Then you've got to walk down the golden streets to the middle of the city. And you've got to enter the tabernacle where God is. You've got to go past all the angels who look after things. You've got to snatch God off the throne, throw mercy aside before you can even reach the ark. I would say what Jesus said. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass than for one tittle of the law to fail. Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark. We've already covered that. Let us go on. Now there is a picture indicating the ark of the covenant. That's the chest on this side with the golden angels. And that's what the people saw in, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, something like that. All fiction. But in reality, that's what Israel had. And they used it in the sanctuary. And all of Israel were keenly aware of God's command. Sabbaths in Leviticus were annual and not weekly. Now, I hope I can rush this a little bit. Uh, Passover was one. Let's go on. We don't have time to come in on them again. Unleavened bread was another in verse 6. Pentecost, verse 16. That's why all those Jews were there on the day of Pentecost. They had to come. Three times a year they had to come. And God arranged it that way. So that when the Holy Ghost came down, Peter would come out and start preaching to folk from other tongues. And they all were amazed. They said, aren't these folk Galileans? How is it we hear in our own tongue? You see how God's providence works things out? They were there. They were also there when Jesus died. They had to be there for Passover. Let's go on. Feast of Trumpets was another. Atonement, verse 27, that's another. Ceremonial Sabbath. Tabernacles, the first day. And tabernacles, the last day. There they are. And God said to Christians, not to everybody, Christians, through Paul, don't let anybody judge you in Sabbath days. You don't have to keep these anymore. Why are you so quiet? Say amen. amen. You're not burdened with that anymore.